All right, if you were looking to demo the heart, the circulatory system, and use an online tool to do it, well, we're going to jump into an explorelearning.com gizmo today on the circulatory system. Let's go. Okay, guys, so I have a paid account to explorelearning.com. Love it. We use it all the time. And this one's on the circulatory system. So every time, if you're not familiar with how this works, you're going to have the gizmo list here. You're also going to have um, some teacher things down at the bottom that you can import into Microsoft or Google Docs as a PDF to use with Kami and your LMS, whatever. Uh, there are guides there. Now, I've assigned a different structure for my students. I have them play for five minutes and then tell me what they observe by changing one thing at a time. So. Um, if your students don't log in, that's all they're going to get is five minutes and then it's going to kick them out and say, Hey, if you've got an account, sign back in. So I have them do that five minutes. It kicks them out. They sign back in and then we move on. But the circulatory system one is really pretty awesome. So the first thing that we're going to show is I'm going to show the labels. So obviously we're going to talk about anatomy and physiology. The first thing you're going to notice is that there are a bunch of parts that our circulatory system or cardiovascular system is going to connect to our heart, our blood vessels, and then our organs, right? So if we do look at those three basic things, the other thing that we're going to think about is that our circulatory system has three main vessels. It has arteries, it has veins, and it has capillaries. So if I click on the blood flow, I want to know where is blood moving through the heart. I'm going to think about two things to, um, Remember, right, we have an A for artery and a V for vein or an A for atria and a V for ventricle. So if we can remember that, why I'm doing this with my hands is because if you think of an arrow, an A points up and a V points down. And so atria at the top, ventricles at the bottom, arteries carry blood up and away and veins bring them back down in as far as the heart's concerned. So now I'm going to go ahead and click play and we're going to see that blood moves around the body in a, partic uh, a predictable pattern. It flows out through an artery, comes back through a vein, comes into an atria, down into a ventricle, out through an artery. It's going to come back through a vein to an atria, to a ventricle, and then it just repeats that two loop process. Well, what's going on here is in these loops, we have one loop that is all about oxygenation and two, the second loop, which is all about oxygen delivery and carbon dioxide pickup. So we constantly have this delivery of oxygen, pickup of carbon dioxide, then send it back to the lungs for gas exchange to happen in the lungs. Now where you see these little guys going on here, these are capillaries. So an artery, which is where it's in now, is going to go through a capillary, a small branch, and then it's going to come back to a vein. So arteries turn into veins in the capillaries. Now, if we take this syringe up here, which is just a fancy word for a needle, we can test the blood on each side of, in this case, an appendage, like an arm. And then we get, when we do that, we get a microscopic view of the blood and what, what it looks like. And we get a chemical sample of what the blood looks like as well. So in this case, we can look at the oxygen level. We can look at the carbon dioxide level. We can look at the blood sugar. Remember, that's energy. And we can look at the urea level, which is waste. So if I drag this to the other side, now what I can see is I can see what's changed in the arm. So in this case, we see, the, uh, I'm sorry, I went, from, I went from a vein to an artery, so I went backwards. But now we can see that the oxygen level was higher before it went into the arm. The carbon dioxide level was lower. Blood sugar was higher. So the arm's using up some energy. It's using up some oxygen. It's creating some carbon dioxide and it's creating some waste or urea. Well, that's what we would expect, right? But um, besides the muscles and bones and whatnot in our arm, we also have our lungs. So if we're gonna look at it here, we have to test the blood before the lung. And then after, we can look at how the lung is changing the blood. Well, we know that our lungs are all about bringing oxygen into the body and releasing carbon dioxide. So that's what we would expect to happen. But if you don't know anything about the kidney, you could test the kidney both sides. You could test the intestines, the liver, the trunk and lower body is basically just your waist and lower body. And we have right kidney, right lungs, right arm in our head. So if we click pause here for a second, we can stop the blood flow. 
But here's basically why you might want to use this gizmo and what you're going to do with it. Number one, um, you're going to investigate how the blood changes in different organs or appendages of the body. Number two, you're going to be able to look at how blood flows and moves through the heart in a two loop system. And then number three, you can take a look at a microscopic view of the blood and a chemical analysis of those individual parts to see how they change as they go through that two loops and the appendages and organs of the body. So that is why you might want to use the circulatory system gizmo and how you're going to go through that. Now, if you're a teacher and you want to take a look at some of the things that are in here, um, one other thing that you might be able to do is to create a preset. So for one particular reason, you want to set something up like this is the way I want it to look for every kid when they come in. I don't want them to have to turn on the labels and the blood flow and move the syringe to the kidney. I can go up here and create a preset. And then when I go ahead and assign that, it's going to load that particular preset of the gizmo. And this works on almost all of the gizmos. Okay. But if you look down below this in Explore Learning, you're also going to have a quiz. Now, I don't use these very often. They're a one shot deal because it shows them the right answer. When they take it again, they think, oh, great. Well, I just can mess it up the first time. Yes, it will tell them the right answer, but it doesn't change their initial grade. So make sure kids understand that if you're going to use this function. Um, and, and these are things they can use the gizmo to answer from time to time. But you could create your own questions if you wanted to or put these into a Google form and shuffle the responses if you wanted to do that as well. So uh, that's one other part of this. The, to see the other things, you need to go back. Now, to go back, we'll notice that there are lesson materials. You could submit your own if you make some rock solid kick some class uh, type documents that you think other teachers would benefit from, you can submit those and they would be in here down at the bottom for the community. Really cool, uh, especially if you teach kids that are learning a second language, check it out down below. You'll see some of those sometimes, but these are the ones produced by uh, the educators that work for Explore Learning and they come in a PDF format, a Microsoft Word format and a Google Doc format. And the Google Doc format's pretty new, but it's really great if you want to customize them. So uh, if you are a Microsoft school, then just stick with the Microsoft Word. But if you're a Google school, then go ahead and uh, make a copy of it. So when you open it up, and then all you're gonna do once this opens is make a copy. So once you make a copy of that document, you just simply customize it however you want for your kids and then bring it back up into your LMS, which could be Google Classroom, Canvas, whatever you guys happen to use and assign it. Now. Um, the kids don't have access to an answer sheet, but they may be online. So just be careful of that. Uh, kids can find them, which is why I always customize mine uh, and pull things in and out. There's a teacher's guide as well if you need a little help with the content yourself. Hey guys, that is it for Explore Learning uh, Circulatory System Gizmo. I hope it's helpful. Um, I hope it helps you kick some class. Uh, drop some comments down on what's your favorite gizmo that you guys use and uh, how do you use it in your science or general class. So I would love to hear from you. We'll catch you next time from Ball Guys High. See you later.